The Three Angels Media International, 3AMI, is a Christian media organization that creates multicultural and multiracial value-based inspirational contents and entertainment using innovative technology. We tell and share stories of hope that shape and mold character, challenge our audiences to schedule their priorities, heal, uplift, and restore. 3 AMI will enrich viewers and diverse populations and families through films, series, shows, comedies, romance, thrillers, documentaries, mission stories, music, faith-based sermons, health and lifestyle, and other media presentations etc. to empower Adventist families and the Christian communities around the world to live on purpose while we wait for the second and soon return of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Subscribe to 3AMI at 3AMIFilms.com Subscribe also to 3AMI YouTube channel. Welcome to 3 Angels Media International Sabbath School. It's a great opportunity once again to gather to study the Word of God that has power to transform our lives. This week we are privileged to share with you Lesson 3 captioned the power of the exalted Jesus the power of the exalted Jesus I'm your host chief host Dr. John Wampo and with me here is my co-host Pastor Jen can you greet our audience I'm excited to study with you this is a very powerful lesson thank you and we have also here with us Pastor Ayala Pastor can you greet happy Sabbath to you children of God thank you very much so today we are looking at the power of the exalted Jesus. It's an exciting lesson that we are all going to study together. And the memory text is taken from Ephesians 1 verse 19 and 20, which says, Through the Holy Spirit, believers may know what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places. As we go into this study, we will sing a hymn, and that is hymn 185. We will sing together, and then we go into the wonderful uh, study that we have today. 185, Jesus is all the world to me. Jesus is all the world to me. My life, my joy, my all. He is my strength from me.
Shall we bow as we pray? Father, we thank you so much for the power, immense power that you've made available to us through Jesus Christ. The power that is death and resurrection has made access to us to utilize that at the name, at the mention of the name of Jesus Christ, every knee shall bow. Because all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to Jesus Christ. Help us to tap into the power and into the currency of this exalted Christ. Amen. That he will be made manifest in our daily lives. That he will be made manifest in our need. That every other power that's trying to push us aside to conquer us, Father, that you will give us your victory to be overcome us. Amen. Amen. Thank you because of this magnificent power that you have shared with us. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. As we can see, this lesson has some four areas that is very crucial for us to understand the power of the exalted Jesus. We see Jesus' power through Jesus' resurrection. We see Jesus' power through the exaltation at the throne of our compassionate God. We see Jesus' power when all things have been placed under his subservience, under the rule of Christ. And fourthly, we see Christ being given to the church as the head. When we understand the power, the immense power that's been made available to us through Christ and utilize it, our lives will be transformed, our problems will be solved, and every other demonic power and influence that tries to tackle us to be defeated Amen. when we utilize this powerful name Jesus. of Jesus Christ, the name that is above every other name. And now we look at the area of prayer. This power has so much that it can accomplish when we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Pastor, can you open with us to the book of Ephesians chapter 1. Let us look at Ephesians chapter 1 verse 15 through 23. How is this power made available to us? How is it made accessible to us as we uplift each other? as we pray in that name. Yes, Pastor. I read from King James uh, Version. Okay. It says, Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, yes. and love unto all the saints, cease not give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, 
may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the highs of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling, Amen. and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, Amen. and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us, word, who believe. Amen. According to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Amen. Verse 21. Far above all principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in, in that which is to come. Amen. Verse 22 says, And had put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Amen. Amen. Far above, I took that one, far above. He's been given the power far above every other power. Mm -hmm. Isn't that comforting? Yes. Sometimes in our world, we face injustices. We face oppression. We face rulers. And in the history of the world, we have seen rulers like Pharaoh, rulers like Nero, yeah. rulers in contemporaries like Adolf Hitler, Idi Amin, and other uh, uh, rulers who were so brutal and who holds so much power. Mm. But one thing about each and every one of these rulers that have come and gone is that their power is inconsequential comparing to that power that has been given to Jesus Christ. So believers are called to utilize that powerful name you see Paul praying for the church, praying for the church at Ephesus, even while he was in prison, using that same magnificent name, Jesus Christ. In other words, we can lift each other up. And that is the question here for us today. How do we lift each other up? Knowing this immense power that has been made available to us in Jesus. Dr. Jen, how do we lift each other up? Before we go into, into lifting each other up, yes. I want us to dwell on the aspect that says that we need to pray with thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. Yes. It is, it is exciting yes. to be able to come to the throne of God. Yes. It, it, it is exciting to come boldly to the throne of God knowing that you are able to approach him directly yes. through Jesus Christ. That's right. It is a privilege that we have that our ancestors did not have. They had to uh, uh, bring the animal for sacrifice, go through the priest and all that. But we're able to pray anywhere we are with thanksgiving. So it's a privilege that we need to appreciate. Mm -hmm. And then back to your question, lifting each other uh, to the throne of God. I want to praise Paul. I want to say that Paul is strong. Yes. Because he was in That's prison. True. Yes. Instead of praying with mourning, God, why me? <laughs> yeah. He was in prison and he was encouraging people who were not in prison. prison. He was pastoring, very, pastoring from, from the prison. Pastoring walls. from the prison. Pastor, is, pastoring amazing. from the yes. prison walls. Mm. Praying and he will say, whenever I pray, I'm praying and giving God praises on, be, on your behalf. So lifting each other in prayer is something we need to cultivate as a habit. All right. We don't right. just pray. If we only pray for ourselves, it's mm -hmm. selfish. Yes. Even Jesus gave us an example when he started praying for his disciples. So we put it as a habit. We pray for ourselves. We pray for our family members. We pray for people in prison. We pray, pray for many people in prison should not be in prison. That's right. So people in prison that should be in prison. There are some that should be in prison that are not in prison. 
So don't ever feel more righteous than people who are constrained. So you remember people that are, you don't even know. You pray for the sick in the hospital. You pray for people. You 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 spread your nets yeah. to lift each other in prayer. That is so. The prayer, be. our prayer should not be self selfish always. Mm -hmm. Yeah, centering on us on our own needs. Paul was spreading from prison. Pastor, okay. what do you want to add here? Because yeah. the lesson talks about thanksgiving being the native language of prayer. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, sir. Yeah. And to just buttress to what uh, Pastor Jane just uh, said. Yes. Um, the, the model, the model of prayer, of, of praying of Paul should be our model as yes. well. And just as Pastor Jane said, Jesus Christ, he didn't even Pray, he hardly prayed for himself, he prayed for others, mm -hmm. even the sinners, mostly the sinners. And that should be our model of prayer. Thanksgiving is the food, let me, I will say, is the food of God. Mm -hmm. God does not eat any food, no matter what you present to him, whether you present money, even our money in the church, he doesn't spend our money. <laughs> we spend it. <laughs> we are the world spending the money in the church. God does not spend our money. He doesn't need our material things. All he needs is praise. praise. When we praise God, it gladdens the heart of God. Mm. Yes. So, and that should be the first thing that we do in our prayer. When we start our prayer, the prayer of thanksgiving. Yes. And as you see the way Paul prayed, he started with thanksgiving. Yes. On behalf of what God is doing, no. because God was doing something in the midst, because yes. these people have received the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. yes. He was thanking God because they have received the power of the Holy Spirit, yes. and now he's praising God for, for them on behalf yes. of these on people. Behalf of them. So now we let's put it into our contemporary. Yes. We praise God for what God has done. Whether it is the little in fact, little thing for God giving you water to drink yes. you can praise God for that because it's the God who provides mm -hmm. that. Right. that sometimes we wait for bigger things to praise the God ones, for bigger things we say is they are bigger that's right mm -hmm. when we, bigger are miracles. So we are alive that's the most biggest miracle that mm -hmm. you woke up this morning I woke up this morning yeah. I'm sure some of us have used the toilet this morning yeah we mm. were able to urinate yeah by without, ourselves without paying, for it. without paying for it through dialysis you know some people mm. can only urinate through dialysis they right. have to be on dialysis three times or four times a week mm. but we wake up our legs walk this morning so what paul is trying to say here is that we need to formulate this habit of praying for each other and thanking god mm. always for the wondrous things that he's graciously doing for us. He doesn't have to do them, but he graciously does those things for us. So we gather up the blessings of God and thank him for them. We always have to do that. We seek to perceive God at work in difficult circumstances and praise him for his transforming presence in our lives. Celebrating the grace and power of the exalted Jesus, we thank him for the blessings for blessing those in the circle of our influence. And this is what Paul did. Even though he was behind bars, he kept thanking God. I, I pray that God will give us the spirit of Paul, that kind of mindset, to be able in difficult circumstances to still praise God. And you discover that that was a habit that the disciples of Jesus formed, uh, Paul and Silas. You remember? Yes, even they in prison. Were in chains. They were praying. They were praying and their chains. An, an angel came. An angel came. So, praise, just as Pastor Ella has said, is a food. is a very good way to God. It's a habit that I pray God will help all of us. Because, as the lesson mentioned, sometimes what we do is whine. And we do that. <laughs> we whine in prayer. We complain. We and complain, complain and complain hmm. and complain. And I'm, so, I'm sure sometimes God will just be laughing at us because some of the things we are praying for, whining and complaining for in prayer, if God were to grant them quickly to us, I wonder that some of them will even kill God. us. Sometimes God will not answer us just quickly because he knows the best for us. I don't know if somebody wants to ask something before we move on from there. Yeah, let me, let me go ahead. Down. So, yes. our prayer should be 
Thanksgiving for us. Yes. And generally, for people, then back to ourselves for Thanksgiving for us. Then followed by a prayer of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Yes. We ask for forgiveness. Everything that we have, we know we have committed. We ask for forgiveness. Yes. Then do intercessory prayer. Yes. Intercessory prayer. That was what Paul was doing. He interceded on behalf of the Ephesians. Yes. He has not even mentioned himself. He removed himself completely. Yes. So intercessory prayer goes to other people, not even to ourselves first, but to okay. others first. All then right. back to us. Okay. Then we end it with thanksgiving again. Yes. Thanksgiving now means that God, we praise God that God answer has the answered the prayer. So that is to be the model of our prayer. All right. So, Pastor Jen, what does he mean when Paul says we should pray without season? What, what, how can you interpret that? Is it that we will constantly just share your experience with us, your opinion? What does he mean to pray without season? Pray without season to me means that means living a life of prayer. Mm. Prayer doesn't have a venue. Okay. Like prayer it. doesn't have a position. Amen. Yes. Prayer doesn't have a code of dressing. Mm. It's, it's a living it's living a life of prayer. Okay. As you're going, you're constantly praying. Yes. You 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 are communicating with God. You are even thinking about something before you know it. You start talking to God. That's right. And then you are you are you are you are walking. You see something. You are you are already praying against. You know, it's it's it's, it's a life of prayer. It's constant. Mm. You, if you are really in a relationship with God, you can't stop but live a life of prayer. It's continuous. All right. Yeah. So, so I took something from Pastor Jen. Prayer, praying without ceasing doesn't have a position, a venue. That's something we need to understand. We cultivate this attitude or habit of thanks living, as I put it, thanks giving, thanks living, praising God. Even when we are driving, when it's in a, we're in a good mood, we're in a bad mood, bad circumstance, the lesson talks about that it does mean that Blessed by God's Spirit, we move through life with hearts open to the presence and the power of God, seeking cues for thanksgiving to Him. Mm -hmm. That is that life Looking for things that we it. form that habit of thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. You sing a song if you can, if you're driving to work, if you're in a good mood, if you're in a bad situation, just Having that mindset is important. It means a readiness to process the issues of life in the presence of God, to seek divine counsel as we experience the twists and turns that life brings. It means living not in the estrangement from God, but in engagement with Him, ever open to divine leading and guidance. So for us to be able to overcome life issues, we need to cultivate this attitude of always being in the spirit of thanksgiving and the spirit of uh, being open to the spirit of God who will guide us into all things. And if you look at the scriptures again, Pastor, can you read for us uh, again from Matthew, uh, sorry, from John 14, verse 13 to 14? As this foundation is very important for us to understand this week lesson. The power in the exalted Christ. John, John 14. 14, verse 13 to 14. It says, Yes. And whatsoever ye, ye ask in my name, Yes. That, that we I do. That I will do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. Amen. If ye if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. I will do it. And now, when you look at again, First uh, John, chapter five, verse fourteen through fifteen, he said, "If we ask anything in the name of Jesus, remember we are looking at the power of the exalted Christ. If we ask anything in the name of Jesus, according to His will, mm -hmm. hmm, what happens is that." He hears us. This is very important. If John 14 uh, says, 
uh, if you ask anything in my name, then he clarifies it further according to his will. Mm -hmm. So there are many prayers that we have prayed, Pastor. I'm sure. Yes. There are many prayers you have prayed that that that's that, never that, that answered. <laughs> Mm. Because and it's answered in on the other side. Other okay, way. you can you can you can talk more on that. Is it because we didn't pray according to God's will, or we were? Better. Go ahead. Mm. Because it sometimes better. yes, sometimes we may not be praying according to the will of the Father. That Maybe. is why the we is where even Jesus Christ Himself yes he prayed in the will of His Father yes when He had Jesmer. When he was praying, he didn't just say, God, I want you to do it. He said, if it is according, if it is your will, let this cup yes, pass, pass over. But nevertheless. He, said, he, he didn't just say, because despite the fact that he had the power, have the authority. Yes. As the lesson of this week is saying that he has the power over all principalities, dominion. Yes. And all the names, his name is greater than every other name. Yes. But he still depends. It depends on, on the, the on will the way of, his of his father. So sometimes we as human beings, yes. we are very fast, very quick to ask for what we want. Lord, I want to get a house. Lord, I want a beautiful car. Lord, I want I want to have uh, children. Lord, I want to have this. I want to have that. But in the other way around, God may be looking at it that even whether it is not yet time, yes. or whether if I give it to you, it might be the it might end up being the one that kill you. Yes. Or God will not say, okay, I will give it to you, but in the future. So, but we human beings, we want it fast. Right now. But the lesson of this week is yes. telling us to pray in according, his, to, according to his will. Pastor John, thank you so much, Pastor. And Pastor John, can you share us a time when, I know there have been so many times, but can you specify a specific time you want to share today? audience when the holy spirit impressed on you to pray for someone in the name of jesus and what was the outcome i know there are plenty of them just the ones you can quickly remember to share with us okay well what what um, what i can say is that when you walk with the holy spirit yes and he talks to you and you listen he talks to you again Man. yeah so what if he talks to you and you don't listen he kind of shrinks back um i i i i, I, I remember a time that um that um actually let me relate that i know i know there was a dream you had yes and you shared with me and it was a direct um revelation of what was going to happen to someone okay. and mm -hmm. we had to call the person and spoke with the person yes and we prayed about it and God you see the thing is that I believe where the where God says that is able to change his mind that's yes. why when people are saying ah don't just God changes his mind so we we had a dream we had a dream we prayed for it and god answered that prayer hmm. so god is able to divert an evil from happening that's right god is able to divert an evil from happening especially when he showed it before and even if he doesn't show it before he, when you pray yes. he's able to protect amen let me quickly also share this as we move on in the course of my pastoral ministry, I remember a time, this has happened many times, but this one is very vivid. A couple has been losing children through miscarriages. And it, it's a very painful experience for anyone who has gone through a miscarriage or a couple of miscarriages. It's mm. always a very devastating experience. So this couple, we are about to give up and they came to church and we, we, we know they've had this encounter for some time. So the Holy Spirit impressed on my mind to lay my hand on that uh, Woman. woman's uh, stomach, of course, with the consent of the her husband and of course my wife right there. So I, once I put my hand on her stomach, 
I started praying. The Holy Spirit ministered to me that the prayer we're already praying has been answered. There's a baby there. Mm. It's already moving in that, uh, in the womb of the woman. You said the Holy Spirit opened your eyes to yeah. see that there's already the, a baby. But the woman didn't the, the, even know. The woman know didn't even know that she there was, was a baby. There. Yeah, the woman didn't mm. even know she was pregnant. So the Holy Spirit moved and told me, you don't need to waste time on this prayer. It's just a prayer of thanksgiving because the baby you're praying, asking God for, God has already planted it. And then I opened my eyes to tell the couple that, see, you're pregnant. God has already confirmed that the child you're asking for is already here. Because we're praying in the name of this Jesus. So after we had closed church that Sabbath, the couple they, they went to went home to test and did the week. text and then there was they already a baby they didn't know crying that pastor is true i didn't know i was so and so you know pregnant, pregnant and that's how jesus glorified himself there have been so and many that baby was not lost of course the baby, the baby was alive not today lost. the baby was not lost yeah. and that's that's actually the last time they lost the baby that, that, because yes. after that they started, they started having, having, having yeah, children that, no, no hmm. baby. and another person also from the church that I pastored here for 15 years was also having constant, like every time this person takes in, there'll be a miscarriage. And one day this individual came to church and I saw that she was very depressed. As I was preaching, God ministered to me to call that lady. And I called that lady and I spoke with authority in the name of this exalted Jesus. And I said, whatever that has been causing you this trouble in the name of Jesus today shall be the last Amen. you will be delivered and this problem will be solved and of course we agreed in the name of Jesus I lay my hand pray for the lady and by the special grace of God after that this lady started having children Amen. and that's demonic spirit power force whatever was you know taking these babies causing these miscarriages god just used that powerful name of jesus to buy it so the point of sharing these stories is that there is power in the name of the exalted jesus yes. one day we were driving my wife and i that was in 2006 it was a friday you know we were driving coming back we missed our way as we were trying to navigate that time, there was no GPS. It was MapQuest. Mm. Our car, the devil just wanted to kill us, kill that, us day. that day. Wanted to finish us. Our car suddenly, the tire, one of the tire blew up. My wife was driving and the car flew up a hill. Wow. And the only thing I could remember immediately was also this power that is made available flew to up us. A hill. Made so, a U-turn. As the car flew up the a hill, traffic. made wow. a U-turn, landed on another car, crashed, the smashed the back of that car. Jesus took control. In that, instead of that car to hit the driver and kill the driver, the car landed at the, the trunk. Past, at the trunk and smashed it completely. Hmm. And the driver came out on hand. Hmm. Then we that landed on top of the car came out. What only happened is that my wife glass fell off from her eyes and still didn't break. Because what I did immediately is that the Holy Spirit minister to me to utilize the power that we've been giving access in the name of Jesus. So I shouted with authority, peace be still. And that yeah. car that was on full speed, that's when the car landed and stopped. It was still on drive. It wouldn't move forward it wouldn't move back in fact it was when we came out that we saw that the car that was still on drive was still on drive. it was on drive and then but we, immediately immediately pastor john said peace be still, still. The, car the car that was on still. drive stopped it was still on just drive it stopped it's right like there. something just held it. it it just stopped it was still on drive because he had faced the opposite direction yes this was on the freeway that's right wow so it stood right there so it wouldn't power move in the name of so Jesus. god is yeah. also uh, Jesus, the exalted Christ, has also mm. power over mechanical mm -hmm. engineering. Amen. He has, he has Amen. power over the internet. He has. That's why the Bible said that he's been given authority mm. over all principalities 
and palace. Mm. So the other time, Pastor Ella shared a, a testimony of a child that has died in the yard where he used to live, where he was pastoring. Yeah. And the family rushed to him as the pastor, and he rushed to the family and prayed in the name of this same Jesus. exalted Jesus. Amen. And that child that was dead came back to life. Amen. Fellow believers, brothers and sisters, the point of this lesson is for Amen. us to Amen. utilize the, the assets, the power that we've been given in the name of Jesus. That power is still available mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. So we need to experience the insights from the Holy Spirit to understand the enormity, the enormity of this power and the availability of this power to us. Because sometimes what happens is that we are scared. Uh, Pastor, can you open with us Ephesians 1 verse 15 to 17? Can you open with us? Let us see how does the Holy Spirit help us? Because if we don't understand that we have access to this power and what this power can do for us, then we will not be able to use it, to put it to good use. Yes, go ahead. Sir. Ephesians chapter 1 is 15 to 17. 16. Yes. 16 to 17. Yes. Cease not to give thanks for you, mm. making mention of you in my prayers, okay. that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and mm. revelation in Amen. the knowledge of him. Amen. Amen. Pastor Jen, can you read for us Matthew 7, verse 7? Or whoever gets there first. Let us, we are also looking at how we can utilize this power and the role of the Holy Spirit for us as believers. Matthew 7, verse 7 to 11. Matthew 7, verse 7 is a very known text. Yes. My version is New Living Translation. It says, keep on asking and you will receive Amen. what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds, and to everyone who knocks, the door will be open. Amen. On experiencing the ins insights from the Holy Spirit, as I was saying in my previous statement, yes. the Holy Spirit is someone that when he speaks to you and see that you listen, he speaks more. That's right. Hmm. I have had, I have had numerous experiences with the Holy Spirit, but I remember one day that I just decided to, he said, I said, God, I know we're in a relationship. It's not that I couldn't set an alarm or something. Mm -hmm. I was about to go to bed. And that day I was uh, alone in my, in my bedroom. And I said, Holy Spirit, I want to pray at 3 a.m. Mm -hmm. I want you to wake me up at 3 a.m. to pray. Mm -hmm. And I went to sleep. I slept calmly. And I remember in the middle of my sleep, I had a very loud noise on the bed. Purr, purr. <laughs> it was the it was something physically came and tapped my bed so loud. Hmm. And I opened my eyes. Immediately I opened my eyes, I looked at the clock. It was exactly 3 a.m. Mm. And when the Holy Spirit wakes you up to pray, you don't sleep back. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I knew that you don't want to mess with this. So I quickly knelt down and I started to pray. What I'm trying to say is you, you can have a relationship with God. You can have a relationship with the Holy Spirit when he speaks to you and you listen, he speaks more. Yes. He's relational. Yes. He's looking to relate with us. That's right. And he likes when he talks to you, you listen. Then he knows that he has a relationship. That's right. It's like also when you are conversing with your wife, Pastor, mm -hmm. or your husband, as the case mm -hmm. may be. If you see that you have a great conversation with someone, you want to engage you want to that person and pay attention to. Them. You mm -hmm. want to spend time with that person. That's the mm -hmm. same way the Holy Spirit. Uh, Pastor, can you? I know you want to ask something on the Holy Spirit, but can you read for us Ephesians 1 verse 17 through 19? Let us see how the Holy Spirit uh, 
bring special insight because that's the point to it. Yes. I'll read from uh, 18 and verse 19. Okay. Outward. So, the, the highs of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling Man. and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints Man. and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us what who believe Amen. according to the working of his mighty power praise the Lord so you can see that the Holy Spirit gives us the Spirit of God. And this Spirit of God gives us wisdom, mm -hmm. revelation, and knowledge of Christ. He gives us what? Wisdom. The Holy Spirit gives us wisdom. The Holy Spirit gives us revelation. The Holy Spirit gives us what? Knowledge of Christ. To also know the power that the immense power that we as believers have access to. The Holy Spirit also enlightens our understanding to know our calling, our purpose in Jesus Christ. So three things here. The Holy Spirit gives us wisdom, revelation, and knowledge of Christ. When we walk with him, when we make friends with him, and we pay attention to him. Secondly, the Holy Spirit enlightens us because without knowledge, what happens is that God's people perish. perish. So the Holy Spirit gives us this enlightenment that helps our understanding to know our purpose and our calling in Christ. And lastly, the Holy Spirit gives us experience to know and experience Christ's immense power and, and the impact as believers in our lives. So if we can forge this valuable it, 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 what it means that we matter to God in the heart of God in the plan of God the believer matter and the believer holds an exalted position over every principality and power of the enemy again the scripture says I think somewhere in Luke that I have given you authority mm -hmm. to trample, to trample upon serpents. serpents and snakes and to overcome and all the, power of all the, enemy. the strategies of my the version enemy. says all the power, all the strategies of what? Of the enemy. And nothing will by any means hurt us. So we will take a break now, after which we continue to, uh, is to, to explore how witnessing and experiencing this mighty power of God in our lives through uh, the leadership of His Spirit uh, can help us as believers Many times it's ignorance, and, uh, and today we can see that there is a, a kind of a renewed interest in juju. Pastor, and I don't know if you have seen that. In black magic, in, in fetishism, is on the internet, they're advertising it on social media. Uh, young people are doing rituals, killing, all kind of things right now that we see. So there is, there is a lack of understanding because people do not give themselves, uh, make themselves available to the leading of the Holy Spirit, you know, to lead. So as we return, we will see how the, the power that's made available in the resurrected Christ can help us to overcome. we we'll go for a break now. Thank you. <laughs> The Three Angels Media International, 3AMI, is a Christian media organization that creates multicultural and multiracial value-based inspirational contents and entertainment, using innovative technology. We tell and share stories of hope that shape and mold character, challenge our audiences to schedule their priorities, heal, uplift, and restore. 3 AMI will enrich viewers and diverse populations and families through films. Series, shows, comedies, romance, thrillers, documentaries, mission stories, music, faith-based sermons, health and lifestyle, and other media presentations etc. to empower Adventist families and the Christian communities around the world to live on purpose while we wait for the second and soon return of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Subscribe to 3AMI at 3AMIFilms.com Subscribe also to 3AMI YouTube channel.
before we go, we went for break. We we were considering uh, the immeasurable power that's that has been made available to us as believers, and how the Holy Spirit works with us if we if we work with Him. And now we continue uh, by looking at how we witness and experience this mighty power of God uh, at work within us. Uh, Pastor Ayla, mm -hmm. can you share with us what's your experience? Do you believe that the power of Jesus still works as he works from the days of old? Because there is so much renewed interest in black magic, juju, ritual, and all kind of things that you see on the social media and even in the lives of many people and even some churches today, some pastors are going to get some of these powers, you know, what, what, what are your thoughts? Uh, we live in a doom, a doom world. Yes. The world we live in today doesn't want to seek God, but they want to seek gods, the small <laughs> deep God. Yes. And if people don't, they don't even show interest even to go to church. But there is power. Yes. The power of resurrection. Jesus Christ has the power over death. Amen. It's it's that power also helps us to know that even though we are going to die, but yes. we are going to be resurrected. That's right. Because Jesus Christ is the first yes. born among the dead. Amen. He's the first fruit that was born. Yes. He died and he resurrected. Amen. And he also showed that power in yes. the life of uh, uh, what is the name Nazareth. of the Nazareth yes. who was resurrected. That is to show that we are serving a God that is above every other gods, Amen. every other power, kings, yes. president, rich people of this world. They are they show themselves being powerful, but God is is above them. The same power is in the church today. Amen. We are the one who are not claiming that power. I remember there was a particular pastor in Seventh Day Adventist Church. I won't mention the name, but if I'm talking about that pastor, yes. there are two pastors that God gave them the power of, to perform miracles, even yes. in the Seventh Day Adventist Church. Yes, special powers. Yeah, special gifts. It's, it's a gift that God gave to these pastors that I know. Yes. But even it is within the church that are criticizing these people that these people, <laughs> just like Jesus Christ, yes, was crucified, was also was, was criticized. Yes. They said he was using the power of Bessie Yes. They called series of names. When he was even performing those miracles, yes. they were still criticizing him that this power is not from God. It's not from the God that we have been hearing about. Yes. It's from other, other gods. Yes. But this power of God is in the church. The reason why miracles are not happening today is because of the people that come to him. In yes. The church. Yes. People that come to him, what is their heart? If their heart, if their mind, is not yes. with God yes. and they call his name God will not answer that's why he said when you come to me remove all of those things confess your sins if you, are, if you, if you sin against your brother do that do reconcile before you come to the temple and pray to him but most times just as the sin of Achan yes. affected the whole congregation the whole well, people of Israel at that yes. time. Yes. So also that also can affect, affect us. the collective power and the miracles, and not just only miracles. The the I will put it the uh, external manifestation yeah. of the power that is mm -hmm. made available to us has something to do with our belief. Pastor Jen, can you read for us First uh, Corinthians? 1 Corinthians 15, verse 20 through 22. Before, before I read that, 1 yes. Corinthians 15, verse 20 22, on, yes. on, on experiencing yes. the resurrected power. Yes. I want to say that the hour has come and is here. Yes. For they that worship God to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Amen. The hour has come and is now for they that worship God to worship Him individually. Yes, to share mm. the priority. And uh -huh. if you are 
that I keep stressing having a relationship with the Holy Spirit because yes. there's just that is just what God wants us to do. That's right. When mm -hmm. you have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, you will experience that power of resurrection happening in your life. When that happens, if a pastor squandles the the church money, it will not affect you're going to church. That's right. It will not Your affect. It will Jesus. not affect your contributing your tithes. Yes. It will not affect your image about the church because it's not the church that your salvation lies in. Yes. You have That's a relationship right. with God. A personal relationship with God, who hmm. is manifested in the church. And what is church? Church is a collection of fallen beings like me. Hmm. So. That experiencing that resurrection power is personal. Yes. I, I remember a story of a preacher that was preaching and preaching with all the power that God has spare parts. He was preaching. And in that big crusade, there was somebody that had an infection with one of his ears. Mm. The infection has been so bad that one of his ears has already been spoiled. Yes. He, so he, so he, he's, he, he, when you look at his ear, there is no, uh, uh, we call this a p the pinnacle. It's no longer there. So it's just this hole into the air. And when that preacher was praying, that was preaching, God has purpose. Believe it. He can restore your path. This person inside this crusade, I'm talking about having a personal relationship, experiencing resurrection power individually. Yes. Hmm. Pray to God and say, God, just as your word is saying it, that you have swept up. I am believing you to restore my ear. Amen. That crusade was in the night. After prayer, he went to sleep. In the morning, he woke up and he had a new ear. Yes. Pastor, hmm. there was an ear Brandy. while he was sleeping. Yes. God yeah. restored his ear. Hmm. He woke up and he ran with excitement to the preacher. And he said, Pastor, as you were preaching last night that, that, that God has spare parts, you said that, that God has spare parts. I prayed. And I said, God, please restore my ear. That's right. And I woke up this morning and I saw a new ear. And the preacher said, It is not possible. <laughs> mm. He said, Pastor, I'm saying I tapped into what you were preaching last night. Yeah. The preacher said, you mean <laughs> you didn't have an ear when I was preaching? Yeah. He said, there was no ear. There was no ear loop here. I tapped into your word. Hmm. And I, I prayed to God. I said, God, if you really have spare part, restore my ear. I slept and this morning there was an ear. Perfect. Hmm. Yeah. I'm talking about personal experience yeah. with the resurrection power. Yes. Yeah. It's something we have to develop ourselves. Yes. It's something we have to develop with God. And we will experience it. First Corinthians chapter 15. Which verse was I supposed to read? First Corinthians chapter 15, verses 20 through 22, because we're rounding up. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. Yes. He is the first of a great harvest of all who have died. I know some versions who say the first born of resurrection. So you see, just as death came into the world yes. through a man, now the resurrection from the dead has begun through another man. Amen. Just as everyone dies because we all belong to Adam, everyone who belongs to Christ will be given new life. Amen. So the power of resurrection is real. The power of Jesus is real and it works even now. If we believe the resurrection of Jesus is is non-negotiable and the power that it brings and that power is made available even to us as believers that's why Christ has been raised he's given power above all, all powers. powers in heaven and where and on earth, earth. and he said the authority is Far above every ruler, every authority, every other power, now and even in the world to come. Amen. As we are meant to understand in Ephesians 1 verse 21 Amen. and Ephesians 2 verse 2. So that power is available. It's, it's, it's a power that is here. Amen. 
is a power that is as new as the first time when it was given. So let us not underestimate our, 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 our privilege, our inheritance as believers, that this power is still working and doing new things. By way of closing, Pastor, can you share with us your experience uh, in the power of the resurrected Christ in your own life? Personal story, personal encounter, as we conclude. Hmm. Um, I remember when I was in a particular station yes. um, where I was working as a, as a district pastor. Yes. I remember in one of those uh, midweek prayer, yes. it was a surprise for me that one of our church members at that particular time yes. when came to the front of the church and he presented a bottle of water. To me, yes, and I remember that day that woman said, Pastor, I know your our church, Seventh day Adventist church, we don't do all of those kind of things like praying on handkerchief, yes. On and I said, I still believe in some of some things that I, if it is in the Bible, Bible, I believe that's right. This lesson today, we even made emphasis on the apron, yes, of Paul performing miracles, yes. I said, Is, is it not happening see. in the church? That's right, split. Saliva. Yes. Jesus touched the Amen. eyes of, Amen. of the blind. All days we don't use it. That's right. Sometimes, as a church, we should begin to read the Bible and see how what is yes. what has happened in the Bible. That's right. And I apply them. And I, I said, Madam, I believe I believe if you believe, yes. I don't know what is your prayer request on this water, why you bring this water, you brought it to me. Yes. But I'm going to collect it from you and I'm going to pray yes. on this. In the name of you Jesus. You don't need to say whatever it is, but you have already said, Pastor, I've already prayed. I just want you to lay hands on it and pray on this water. Faith. I want to drink it to be here. Yes. I collected that water, that yes. bottle of water. Yes. And I collected it, I prayed on that water. In the name of Jesus. And I gave it back. She drank it with joy. Yes. Pastor, ah, God is God. It's real. Faith. Ah. God answers prayer. Though. Amen. Sometimes God work miraculously. Yes. And He just open our eyes to see that He's still alive. That's right. This woman has been having what is it called, Mar Doctor? You know what I'm saying? Mag is it migraine? Migraine. Migraine. Severe one. I see. Daily, every day. She, oh. When she was sharing the testimony in the church, yes. she said even up to that time before she presented the water, yes. she was still having that severe migraine. headache. And she drank this water. She yes. went home. Yes. I, I received a call in the morning. Yes. Just as Pastor was saying, somebody would see. Yes. It was the it was an operation performed. Yes. During sleep. That yes. is it. And she woke up and she said, Pastor, I just woke up light. I don't feel any headache. Praise Hallelujah. the Lord. See, I left that station. That yes. station. Yes. This woman never experienced headache. Praise the Lord. I said, I, I, just, I just need. I say. This is my sinner. <laughs> that is why I know. Jesus. Yes. I know. See, God, that's why one person was God saying what is something. Yes. Sometimes people go to church because of somebody. Yes. Because he didn't help me. Yes. He was not by my side. Yes. He is a sinner. Yes. I will not stay in the congregation of the sinner. Yes. Ah, God doesn't look at us. But right. the one you call yes. a sinner, yes. so God can use yes. him. That's right. To proclaim this gospel. Wonders. Thank you, Pastor, for that great Focus. testimony. By way of closing, I'm going to share this quickly. Jesus has been given power above all things Powers. and his church. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us tap into this resurrected power. God has made Christ victorious over all evil powers. Let's say amen to that. Amen. The church closely identified with Christ and supplied by him with all it need it is self-granted victory over those folks Amen. when the church gather and pray in the name of jesus in unity the word of god comes to show yes. in fact the word of god said that in acts of the apostles chapter 12 at the church gathered to pray for paul and silas is it is it not paul and silas is it paul and silas or jesus they were praying for them. They, these, these people were already Paul and chained. Silence. Paul and Silas. Yes. They were already in the prison. They yeah. were, they, 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 their day of execution. 16, yeah. mm -hmm. Their day of execution is already set up. 
But the church gathered and prayed together in the name of Jesus. And the chain mm -hmm. fell off. The angels of God opened the gates. Mm -hmm. The problem is if we believe today, if we can unify together and pray in the name of Jesus, the power of God is on display as made displayed as was displayed in the resurrection and his exaltation over every cosmic power has been activated for the church praise the lord Amen. god has given the victorious christ to the church which is so united with him to be called his body Amen. there has been so many instances in my pastoral ministry in our pastoral ministry we have experienced the magnificent power of god working miracles we, we've, we've prayed for a, a, a lad that was going to be, a surgery was going to be performed on the, on the child. The child has already been wheeled into the theater and the doctors were about to, to start that operation and they say they did the last minute test. They say, whoa. Let's, let's redo the scan. Whoa, what happened? Because we gathered together in church, in Grace Ward and prayed in the name of Jesus that that surgery Will because it was a very risky surgery mm -hmm. for the young child and we say God this mm. is your promise word you are a promise keeper please we bind this sickness let that this child let, let this surgery not and God answered that prayer you know that that child was wheeled there and they they've already put anesthesia on the child mm. no 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 it was before anesthesia it was before they wanted to do the last minute scanning no, no, I thought it, there was anesthesia already because the child had to be taken oh, yeah, 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 the child yeah, yeah, yeah. had to sleep through the anesthesia. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah they've already anesthetized the yes, child. Yes. Hmm. And that surgery, and the child is perfect. That surgery was never done Amen. till today. Amen. We gathered together and Amen. said a prescription drug that was given to our daughter and our daughter was born. We said, this child will not suffer this through this, this sickness because this child they they have given this prescription that the child will be on this prescription for the rest of our life that's chidi mm. amara's second daughter mm. and we came together mm. and prayed as a church Amen. that this child will not be on this medication for the rest of her life mm. and after that we of course didn't give the child the medicine mm. we take the child back they ran another test the first one they said wow is this possible the doctor the medical <laughs> they ran another one they say what happened because mm. the whole sickness has it's gone away because the church gathered together and prayed Pray with faith so jesus. there is power in the name of jesus Amen. and that is where we are going to bring this lesson to a close by singing that song together all hell the name of the power of jesus so to our global audience we pray that you will utilize the power the access that be made available to us through Jesus Christ. Two, two, nine. We will utilize that power because it's still available today. So we will close this Sabbath school by singing 229, All Hell, the Power of Jesus' Name. And after that, Pastor Ina, you will close us with a prayer. All Hell, the Power of Jesus' Name. Oh, hail the power of Jesus' name, let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and cry him, Lord of all. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him, Lord, Lord of all. He seed of Israel's chosen race, he ransomed of the
name, O Majesty, has cried and cried. Lord, Lord, to him, O Majesty, has cried. lesson that you have taught us today yes thank you because your name is greater yes is exalted Amen. than every other name Amen. Amen. thank you because at the mention of your name yes every nail shall bow Amen. and every time we confess that Jesus is Lord yes that it help us O oh Lord to put you first in everything that we do yes Father. we have learned from your words today yes that we should be thankful in our prayer yes we should pray without ceasing yes thank you for all these messages thank you that you have taught us yes. help us lord to put all of this into practice in our daily living amen as we live here may the presence of the holy spirit continue to abide with us amen thank you father thank you amen. we pray in jesus name Amen. 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 Thank you, our global audience. Until next time. See you next week. Thank you. Bye-bye. The Three Angels Media International, 3AMI, is a Christian media organization that creates multicultural and multiracial value-based inspirational contents and entertainment using innovative technology. We tell and share stories of hope that shape and mold character, challenge our audiences to schedule their priorities, heal, uplift, and restore. 3 AMI will enrich viewers and diverse populations and families through films, series, shows, comedies, romance, thrillers, documentaries, mission stories, music, faith-based sermons, health and lifestyle, and other media presentations, etc. to empower Adventist families and the Christian communities around the world to live on purpose while we wait for the second and soon return of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Subscribe to 3AMI at 3AMIFilms.com Subscribe also to 3AMI YouTube channel.